beginning. This government cannot learn. You write and speak so extensively about your native country, and let, yet you live overseas. What do you say to people when they ask you, oh, yeah, well, how do you get to say these things? You don't even live here anymore. Well, my credentials are I ran for Congress in 1960. I doubled the Democratic vote and ran 20,000 votes ahead of Jack Kennedy, who was the head of the ticket. 64, the seat was mine, and I turned it down, so I could have been in Congress. 82, I went into the Democratic primary in California, just for Senate, just to see what was going on. And uh, of the top four candidates, I came in number two, spent no money. Each of them spent about $700,000 apiece. And I got a half million votes. I have plenty of credentials when it comes to being out of there on the firing line. I did d decide in 82, however, that it wasn't worth bothering with pu public office if you wanted to be effective. You have to be outside it. Otherwise, you spend, you have to raise to be a senator from California, I think it's $10,000 a week for your first six years, for your first term, so that you can run again. Mm -hmm. Not, you're, you're, a be you're really basically a beggar unless you have some great corporation which is quietly funding you or you have your own money. Ostensibly to give you time to do the people's business. Yeah, people's business is somewhat neglected. In the course of writing about Norman Mailer, you said it's the graveyard of briefly fabled American writers. It's a tribute to the power of democracy to destroy its critics, brave fools, and passionate men. Do we still do that? I think so, but I think back of that is something far more important uh, than the quality. We have more good writers than we have good readers. The problem is that nobody knows how to read anymore or wants to read. I just, I, I listen all the time to conversations as I wander around the country and uh, the vocabularies have shrunk. I mean, there are only about 500 words the average person can use. And this is, uh, it's very distressing. And they, 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 they don't even know what a book is. In many parts of the country, when you say a book, they think of something highbrow like Time magazine. That, they call that a book. <laughs> and a book book is just something, if it isn't the good book, it is something that they will never come near. No, we lack intelligent readers. We have quite a few talented writers, rather more than usual, I would think, at, this, at the century's end. But who will read them? Everything is audiovisual now. The things that are happening with language is a new thing now. It's a, like a nervous tick. Somebody will say, uh, you know, are you going to go to New York next week? Uh, and I said, no, no, I'm going to Chicago. OK. And uh, then you say, and then after, uh, then after that, I think I, I, I may go to London. OK? It's OK that's being added to everything now. There's no such thing as a declarative sentence in America. Oh, no. I've often read about myself, what an arrogant, dreadful person I am, which is no doubt true. But uh, I wonder, what do they base this on? And then I realize that I speak in complete sentences. You ask me a question, I'll try and answer it as best I can in a complete sentence. That's un-American. In America, addition. you say, now, I guess you know where I'm coming from. I think that maybe... Now, I, I could get this wrong, you know, but I, I think, uh, well, you know, like, it's raining, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not conversation. The this heavens would fall if we forwarded a. Yeah, if you just said, no, I statement. say it's raining. And they say, oh my God, what an arrogant person that is to say it's raining. No more, I say it's spinach and I say the hell with it. <laughs> yeah. Of all the work you've done, playwright, novelist, essayist, uh, screenplay author, which medium remains your favorite, the one you feel you can express yourself best in? Live television was the most exciting. Uh, these were plays that you wrote, one hour plays, which actually is about 47 minutes, with three uh, cameras, and they were done literally live. The actors were acting it as uh, it was being sent out, so there was a great deal of tension, excitement, adrenaline. And there were seven live shows a week out of New York City, Philco Goodyear and Studio One. And I must have written 50 to 100 plays in a three or four year period. Only lasted 1950 to about 1960. And you were needed. It's the only time I've ever felt needed in any, nobody wants a novel by anybody. 
and uh, you're generally on play, forget it. I mean, there's no longer even Broadway, is, that's gone away. But suddenly these plays were so popular, and there were only about 10 of us who really could do them. I mean, we were fast and knew how to do them. Uh, there was Chayefsky and Reginald Rose, and uh, we, it was a writer's medium. The director was there to serve us. No auteurs. We were the auteurs because we were the writers. I mean, 20 million people would watch every week. And you'd walk down the street. I remember we did, uh, Philco Goodyear, we did on uh, Sunday nights, walk down the street on Monday. People would be talking about last night's play. We had brought the country together. Uh, it was almost like OJ. And uh, Monday night was Studio One. I walked down the street on Tuesday. They were talking about the play last night. I suddenly knew what, it, felt, knew what it must have been to be an Athenian in the 5th century B.C. when the, the whole town would know. But that's gone. The audience has changed. The vocabulary has changed. Is there anything you see of quality in American art and culture? Literature is, is, is lively, actually. But nobody wants it. I mean, a good novel with wonderful reviews uh, and a Pulitzer surprise, let's say will sell about 20,000 copies in a country of 260 million or whatever we are now. Uh, it's amazing that you can sell so little of anything. Uh, then there are these great, great, huge bestseller things which are like brand names, I mean, it's like Kleenex. Whereas if Philip Roth is writing his heart out, he's lucky to sell 8,000 copies for Updike. I mean, they, their sales are just astonishingly low. And yet they're very well known and regarded, but uh, just a tiny, even William Faulkner, who died quite some time ago, he said in the United States, he said, you know, enthusiasts for literature remind me of people who breed dogs. He said they're kind of hipped on it, and they're kind of mad, they're a little insane, you know, and they talk about cross-breeding and strains. And he said they're about as few lovers of literature as there are dog breeders. <laughs>